Yeah. All right, everybody. We're about to go live on 9.1 FM. This is Rock Mississippi. We got a great show lined up for you today. So sit back, relax, and enjoy. If you're tuning in on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, Twitch, Stitch, go ahead and subscribe and all of that good stuff. It is the post where you post where you're watching in from, and uh, we'll recognize you. Leave a comment there for old brother Jason Clark. Call in number 601-948-5950. So sit back, relax, and enjoy. It's another good episode of Rock Mississippi. And share the video, because it's going to be a great one. We're going to talk to Trent Walker first, but more importantly, we're going to talk to the baddest dynamic trio of brothers in the state legislature today, Representative Sheck Taylor, Representative uh, Carl Mickens, and Representative Kabir Kareem. So sit back, relax, and enjoy. Just so off right now. Oh, okay. Just making sure. Good evening, good evening, good evening, everyone. Welcome to Reviving Mississippi. I'm your host, the Keeper Stamps. We got our co-host, Mr. Jason Clark. How you doing, Jason? Man, doing great, man. Awesome day to be in the city, be in the state of Mississippi, you man. That gone right, it is, sure. man. You that gone right. We got a great show lined up for you, ladies and gentlemen. So sit back, relax, and enjoy. Um, as we begin every show, we always take a moment to remember those folks who are going through bereavement. You know, bereavement is a very trying situation, mm -hmm. especially in times like this where people are, you know, seem to be a little bit distracted, you know, seem not to love like we used to. Mm -hmm. You got to be a friend so you can have a friend when your time coming. Because you know what, Jason? Your dad going to time come. I know. I know. I know. Mine too. I know. That's why I try to be a friend to everybody. Because when I break down, I need every show that I can get, every, every everything I can do. Reinforced it, man. When it's my mama. You're right. My daddy. All right. And so, you never know where it's coming from. So, ladies and gentlemen, make sure you take care of yourself and make sure you take care of your family and your friends because you're going to need them. they all you got. Uh, underwriters for today's show are Mr. Michael Jordan, Michael Jordan Transportation That's Service. True. You can go to www.mjstransportation1.com for your transportation needs. He's the baddest brother in transportation. Woo! Hey, he's going to be loading up this week, getting ready for election day as well. Mm -hmm. So, make sure you go to www.mjstransportation1. Dot com for your transportation needs. Also, go on over to Stamp Super Burger right on Dalton Street and get you a whole cow between two pieces of bread. It's tasting to the last drop. Come on, I'm getting the vegetarian now. Hey, they got a veggie yeah, burger veggie over burger. there. Come That's on, like now. eating a whole vegetable garden. Yes, it is. Yes, it inside is. of one set, inside of one sandwich. And sweet potato fries too. I'm gonna put that oh, out. Man. I gotta put that out there. I gotta look out for my. Phone. And we also sponsored by the Bell Bell Barista. Bell Bell Barista is in the house with that quality hydraulic. Cold fresh juice. That's right. Come on now. Come hey, on, man. Make hey. you feel good. Make you feel good. And especially right now, immune system coming up. You know, you right. got to get that immune system up when now, though. Colds come around, flus come around. So they need to get that bam bam juice. Our Mr. Sam. Give me that number, Jason. 601-699-3869. Uh, at any time, leave a voicemail, text message, or they'll be able to respond back to you. Man, get a number one more time. We'll 601-699-3869. I know it's a lot of nines, but 601-699-3869. It's Bell Bad Barista. Hey, check this out. We got a wonderful young man who was here today to talk about what he has going on for his campaign. First time he's been here, but go ahead, brother. Thank you so much, Brother Stamps. Mm -hmm. uh, for those of you uh, who are not familiar with me, my name is Trent Walker. I am running for Circuit Court Judge in Subdistrict 2 here in Hines County. Subdistrict 2 is essentially Northwest Jackson and Northwest Hines County. Uh, without going through an uh, expansive list of the precincts, if you live west of I-55 mm -hmm. but north of Woodrow Wilson, then if you also live east of Medgar Evers, or else in Presidential Hills, Pocahontas, um, Cynthia Brownsville, and Tennant, then you are in the district. So I want each of you to hear what I'm saying and go out and vote Trent Walker. The reason that I want you to vote Trent Walker for circuit court judge is this. I want you to know that I am running on my resume. I'm a 26 year practitioner of the law and not just law, I'm a litigation attorney. What that means is that I spend my time either in the courtroom or preparing to go to the courtroom. And in that 26 years, I've tried before juries over 60 cases all over the state of Mississippi, both criminal as well as civil. Uh, in addition to that, uh, I want the voting public to know that 
I have, I've done this job before because I was appointed by the Mississippi Supreme Court to be a special circuit court judge for the specific purpose of reducing the backlog of criminal cases that uh, we have here in Hines County. So I've been a circuit court judge, but at this point in time, I'm not asking to be appointed. I'm asking the voters to do the appointing by voting me in as the duly elected circuit court judge. You know, currently I work with the mentally ill as a special master for commitments in the chancery court. What that means is that I decide if mentally ill people can be treated as an outpatient or if they need to be committed to Whitfield or some other facility. Right now, I am the public defender for the city of Lexington, Mississippi, as well as the Hines County Justice Court. Um, I have an extensive amount of experience in the youth court. I've been the uh, youth court referee, which basically means that I sit uh, or I did at that time sit for the elected youth court judge if the youth court judge could not be present that day. And I decided those cases, both uh, delinquency cases as well as youth and neglect cases, uh, abuse and neglect cases um, at that time. So I need people to know that I have put in the work. And so I'm asking the voters to put me to work as your next circuit court judge. I believe that if you're a violent criminal, if you get a fair trial and a jury convicts you, then you can best believe the punishment is going to fit the crime. You know, I believe in second chances for the deserving because I've been practicing law long enough to know that there are instances you got people in the wrong place at the wrong time with the wrong people. And if their history shows that they are deserving of a second chance, I believe in them getting one, you know. But on the other hand, we have people who have used up their second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth chances. And at some point in time, you know, the hammer has to come down if it hadn't already. You know, they didn't learn their lesson before now. So I believe in stiff punishment. I work in this criminal justice system every day. So I know what's done well and I know what needs improvement. You know, the number one thing when I'm talking to people, you know, what people complain about is that speed takes too long for cases to uh, number one from arrest to indictment and then from indictment until the time that case is resolved. So, 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 so tell me this, what sure. do you want the people to do and when you want to do it? Well, on November 8th, okay. I want people to, number one, pray for me. Oh, not November 8th. November 8th, six no, days from no, now. No, Tuesday. Tuesday. This upcoming Tuesday. Right. Come on, this man. upcoming Tuesday. Right. Six days from now. That's right. November 8th. I want people to, first of all, get up and say a prayer for me. Right. And then when you do that, then grab a friend, a family member, or a whole family, and take them to the polls to vote Trent Walker for circuit court judge in sub-district two. Well, we appreciate you, Brother Trent. Oh, Thank you I wish so you much. came by before, and if I didn't have such a heavyweight show today, you could stay longer, brother. But I got <laughs> three of the most dynamic brothers I've ever had the joy to work with. So, uh, again, ladies and gentlemen, elections Tuesday, uh, November the 8th. Govern yourselves accordingly. You can vote early if you qualify to do that up until Saturday at noon. But make sure you go out and vote. These races are important. We got circuit, <laughs> chancery and midterm elections That's that right. are coming up. we got good candidates all across the board, so make sure you govern yourselves accordingly. And I'm going to finish speaking, but I'm just, I want you to emphasize to the voters how important judicial elections are because they're oh, overlooked. So there they, are three branches of government. you got an executive, a legislative, and a judicial branch. So many times we look at the executive branch and we glance at the legislative branch, but the judges are the one that judge on. life, yep. especially with chancery races. Because those are the folks that determine, you know, half marriages in a divorce. Yeah, card. <laughs> that sure. means that half of you all are gonna be standing in front of somebody for an hour to determine the your your uh, your life on a piece of paper for the next for the rest of your life. Oh, okay. Your visitation, your wealth, your your economic potential, and all, that. all of that. And the same thing on the criminal side. You're gonna have about an hour to get yourself together on the criminal side in order to um in order to determine. Your your life, your future, and and and, and, and it give you a, a a sentence, you know, and all that. So make sure you govern yourselves accordingly. Vote for the best person. Don't just go vote for your church member and all that. <laughs> no, go Time vote out for, for the that. best person for the job. Yes, it's not about liking folks. It's about knowing that folks will make a good decision at the right time for you. Thank you, all right. and I appreciate you having me. No problem. Always good to see you. Yes, sir. You, see you. Yes, sir. And again, you're gonna come back next time, man. We're we gonna have had, had, had we had a bombshell to drop today. <laughs> we gotta talk about this bombshell. Oh, I'm gonna sit and listen to that for a few. Sit on back. 
So who want to come up first? Yeah, uh, uh, we got we got three of the most dynamic brothers I had to work with, had the pleasure of working with. Uh, we can start off. We're gonna talk about this Infinity Mega Site up in Lowndes County. We just passed the largest economic development project in the history of the state of Mississippi. And I have three young men whose district mm -hmm. is covering this area, one specifically in the area. And so who want to come up first? Come on now. Don't be shy. You know, I'm gonna, you know, come on. Yeah, come yeah, on. I mean, I mean, I'm saying you know, you yeah. want to leave me? Yeah, come on. We're we all modest and everything. Come on. Man. Representative Kabir Kareem, his, um, his district is actually have y'all got it nailed down yet? <laughs> you know, all of us represent Lyles County. Okay, okay so, then. You know, it's 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 not no uh, what they say, big U's and little I's. Uh, I like that. Right. See, we're all working together. We all collaborate for the people, and uh, we're just happy that we made history today. You know, and oh, thank you for your vote. Thank you for your support, oh, and well, thank you for always being there for us. Most definitely. Let me tell you this: one thing that we have to do. You legislators to pass laws. Mm -hmm. That's the point. The point is to write laws and get them passed to move forward. And what I'm excited about this moment is we got a group, and, and, and you got four of the, the co authors, three of the folks who are directly impacted in the area in the room today, to write the largest economic development bill in the history of the state. And this is monumental. Because one thing we don't focus on enough is the economy. Mm -hmm. And when you have men to come and women to come together to create jobs, we raise a lot of social issues in our time. But one thing I've always found at that capital, when you walk in a room and say, I got an idea to create a job, everybody, everybody put their pen down. <laughs> and, and they say, well, let's hear about it. Yep, that's true. And so for this, Minority community. For those who don't know Lowndes County, it's similar to some places in Hines County. You know, the small town that's about a mile away from this reminds me of Bolton. We are um, the seat, the, the county seat is Columbus, though. Mm -hmm. okay? And Columbus is about a community of 23, 24,000 people mm -hmm. with the surrounding little communities like Artesia, Crawford, New Hope, Caledonia. Mm -hmm. um, but the economic impact of this particular uh, aluminum plant, which I can go ahead and say now is mm -hmm. going to be an aluminum plant. A uh, thousand jobs have been created today. Uh, 93,000, I mean, 93,000, almost 100,000 in pay a year. Uh, it's a game changer, Jim. It's, it's going to change the dynamics of the surrounding area. Uh, if those that are, are not familiar with our area, uh, you have Starkville, Clay, which is West Point, and uh, Columbus. And um, uh, what you're seeing in the uh, infant stage is the greater Golden Triangle area that's about to be uh, developed. So I think they put it, I think they put it like this. The vote that we took today is going to have implications for generations to come in our area. So let's take us back a little bit. You served, you know, many, many years ago in several capacities, mm -hmm. city council mm -hmm. and in your um, uh, in your development district. I did. Uh, the economic team that showed up today, I once served on there as a commissioner on the uh, Lowndes County in, uh, Industrial Development Authority. Okay. And we were responsible for creating the mega sites, putting the infrastructure deals together and hoping and praying that one day as we are prepared, knowing that heaven is a place for prepared people. Mm -hmm. And we, that was kind of like the motto that if we have preparation, they will come. Mm -hmm. And that was about 15, 20 years ago, mm -hmm. with the first being the steel industry. And from there it has taken off to uh, drone development. We make drones out there now at Aurora. We make uh, helicopters for the military. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a plethora of industry in our industrial park. But today is the day that we are landlocked now because of this uh, aluminum plant that's going to be developed on 2,100 acres of land. Mm -hmm. uh, but it just didn't start last night, Representative Stamps. It's been uh, it's an accumulation of preparation over a period of time. And um, when your focus is economic development, 
and you really want stuff to happen for your constituents, you have to put your money where your mouth is. It might get grim, uh, you know, but it, you know that that day is coming. We're here today. So, you know, we're going to bring all three of them one by one. And you're gonna talk about the you're talking about the background of the 15 years it took to get to this point to be prepared. Exactly. Now, um, what is some of the groundwork that other counties can be laying now so that they can have a prosperous future or potentially prosperous future in the, in the, with mirroring some of the activities you put in place? Well, if you want economic development, number one, uh, uh, because some things are time sensitive, the first thing you look at is rail, water, and sewer. You have to have infrastructure down and uh, depending on what type of industry that you're trying to attract uh, electricity and how much electricity uh, can be allotted for that particular industry. Then comes the option of land. You know, you have to have put those pieces of a puzzle together, just like putting a, a jigsaw puzzle together. You put options on land, uh, hoping that once the development materialized, you can pay off those folks who own those lands, but you have to get the options on it. And uh, depending on how big, that's how these mega sites were developed in our area. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it's just everybody had a role to play from uh, the individual on the ground who gave us those options of land to the develop the link, uh, which we call the link, our economic development wing, uh, the link um, to the board of supervisors. Uh, to the legislature. And I think everybody fulfilled their role to their capacity. And, and we're here today celebrating the biggest uh, economic investment in the $2.5 billion uh, that will be invested in the state of Mississippi. Now, we're going to let uh, Representative Taylor talk about the actual bill, but talk a little bit more about, because you have multiple layers of experience. Mm -hmm. Because you're like me, you serve at the local level, mm -hmm. starting off. Mm -hmm. As a city council person, talk about how that relationship or that experience gave you more broader perspective to make decisions today. Well, I wasn't on the winning side as a city council because mm -hmm. initially, when in Columbus, when the mega site idea came about, uh, the city of Columbus was flush with capital. They had seven to eight million dollars in surplus, but they didn't see the vision in the economic director who was just hired. 20 years ago in investing in that mega site. And because of that, we have not, the city of Columbus have not has not been able to benefit from the harvest of those mega sites. So that was, that's bad on our end. So we're going to have to get up, find some resources and put some skin in the game to benefit from those resources. But it takes vision. It takes a collaboration. It takes a team effort. There's no, there's no individual in this, there's no I. It's a team effort, and everybody has a role to play. And if everybody player play their role, you'll be celebrating like we're celebrating in the uh, in the Golden Triangle right now. And uh, look, the, the vote that we cast today, it's not just about today. It's about tomorrow, our generations, and possibly where our children are looking for an exit to leave Mississippi. We might provide an opportunity for them to stay now. There you go. And one thing before I uh, 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 give my seat to my colleague, this company, this aluminum company, has made a commitment to pay for college education for the children who work for this plant. And that's a good corporate citizen. And they don't tell them what else they're going to do, but that just stuck out with me as we were talking about the development of this. Of so this the employees movie. of this plant the company is going to pay for their children's college education that's what was that's what we found out today and um and look it's just huge that's a big deal though that's a big i mean i like to put a stop sign out there on that because that's not something you can you talking about generation wealth exactly so you're talking about if i have four or five children i'm not really focusing on it might be in the military you know we are focusing on the job i'm on the job now i'm, I'm more more loyal to this company what else i gotta do for you guys because right. You provided a level of stability for me for generations. No doubt about it. Right. Seriously, I mean, I mean, I'm, I mean, that's a big deal. To the money is good, two point five billion. We talking about you investing into my children, children. That's right. And 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 and, 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 deal. and yeah, a thousand jobs, almost a hundred thousand dollars a year that this this plant is going to be paying. But think about the two or three thousand people that they need to build it. 
mm -hmm. and their eight subsidiaries that's coming with them. We already got suppliers that's coming. Mm -hmm. So look, we're excited, man. <laughs> we can't thank our colleagues in the legislature for supporting us, for uh, you know, for helping us out with the, their vote today and oh, being supportive. It. And uh, look. I'm not trying to take any of your constituents, but if you're looking for a job, <laughs> hold on now. You're going to put that up like that? We got a few of them in North Mississippi. Well, one thing I can say is that people drive That's from true. a long ways away to go to the Nissan plant to go to work. That's right. And UMC, and VA, and, I mean, all over there. If do. it's creating jobs in Mississippi, there you go. it's building Mississippi go forward. No doubt about it. So. I appreciate it. Thank you, brother. Thank you for having me. Hey, dog, we're going to bring it back in a second. Back in a second. Representative Sheck Taylor, this young man, he's he's the gorilla of the house. He uh he, he has a long background in working in the community, but more importantly, navigating things through the legislation. First, tell the folks a little bit about yourself. Well, brother Stams, thank you for having me. Mm -hmm. And 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 I would say to all of your constituents and your folks out there that you are the reason, one of the biggest reasons why Highlands County is actually progressive and moving forward and going to have a, a real dog in this fight when it comes to water. So let me just put credit and give you flowers while you're here. So I brother, thank you for your work. Now, as far as me, uh, you know, uh, I'm just an old foot soldier at mm -hmm. this point. Um, mm -hmm. Community developer, a long-time community developer, which means affordable housing, which means child care, after school programs, which means community arts festivals, which also uh, means a plethora of things, but one thing I do know is uh, how to empower Black communities. Mm -hmm. uh, that's my that's my uh, my asset, my strongest strength. Um, and I'm I just feel overjoyed today because we have an opportunity to change thousands of lives in the Golden Triangle mm -hmm. and far beyond. So the day is a windfall, not just for the Golden Triangle, but for the state of Mississippi. I'm gonna pull up on the screen here a map of the infinity mega site <clears throat> for Lowndes County. Um, break, the, break this down a little bit because people throw numbers around a lot and people don't really understand these kinds of deals. The state isn't paying $2.5 billion. No. Talk no. about how much money the state's paying. This is this, this is actually uh, the most economical and the lowest investment with a project this size in the state of Mississippi has ever been involved. Mm -hmm. It's my understanding that the state of Mississippi has between 150 to 180 million dollars invested in a 2.5 billion dollar project. And it's reimbursable. Reimbursable. And and, so it's not like the state's paying the money. No. They have to pay the money first and then they get paid back piece by piece. And in fact, what's so attractive about this is the clawback mm -hmm. uh, components to this bill, which means that if this company does not hit its benchmark, mm -hmm. then actually the state of Mississippi recoups that money. Come on, so man. there's not a loss involved here. Win, win. Uh, you know, we've got this program, uh, this project vetted, and actually in the uh, Democratic Caucus meeting today, we had the Mississippi Department uh, uh, MDE come, uh, MDA come today to actually uh, help explain and give further information to it. And I believe they successfully answered every question posed today about whether or not there's a viable pro uh, project. And I stand before you today saying that um, I am very comfortable with my vote, I'm very comfortable mm -hmm. in the vote of my colleagues uh, as Democrats. And this has been a, a, a refreshing bipartisan effort. Mm -hmm. So uh, economic development is the way to heal some of these old wounds we have in the state of Mississippi, mm -hmm. because now we can economically have a seat at the table. So um, when it comes to this area, talk about the impact that it'll have on your constituents in your area? Well, well it's, you know, uh, I mentioned earlier jobs, jobs, jobs. Now, the problem with most of, uh, Mississippi is not the lack of employment, mm -hmm. it's the wages. Mm -hmm. So you'll find that people are working two or three jobs, and, and if you're working two or three jobs, you're away from your family. If you're away from sure. your family, you're away from your children, you're away from your children, then we see what happens when they're not shepherd properly. Structure, mm -hmm. right? The family structure is very important. Mm -hmm. That's right. So if you can actually earn a wage where you can be home at night, watching over your sons and your daughters, you're mm -hmm. better prepared for their future. Mm -hmm. And they also can see you contributing. And, and sitting down at the dinner table is very important when you have discussions about where they should go. 
So this is transformative, not as not just for economics, but our families to be able to be families again mm -hmm. and not just uh, be uh, co-parented by somebody who's an absentee parent because they got to work two or three jobs to make this hustle. And sometimes we berate them for being absent. That's right. But they're being absent in order to provide. Right. That's right. You know, so mm -hmm. um, any more tenants about this bill um, that you would like to flush out so people who may be unclear about some things? Listen, uh, when it comes to DBEs, and that's uh, okay. disadvantaged business, mm -hmm. uh, businesses, and, and sometimes those certifications are not necessarily easy to get. Mm -hmm. But, you know, the question in, uh, in our caucus meeting was around um, the Mississippi uh, Development Authority making sure that there are mandates mm -hmm. from this company and other companies to grow minority businesses. Mm -hmm. Listen, um, at the end of the day, there's protection when you have business. Mm -hmm. uh, you've, you've never seen a bank get robbed without police officers there within minutes. So it's important to be business owners in, in this environment. So we can actually grow our business. We have to do it in a way that is compliant mm -hmm. with um, state statute and things of that nature. But this gives us the opportunity to set our sights on something that is that is high minded, that is very viable and that we can look at this thing and say, you know what, if I have the right mindset, if I have the right business plan, I can be a part of this movement, this economic movement that will accumulate, uh, I think the year is 2029. 20, That's right. So we got some time. So, you know, I was at an event that Commissioner Willie Simmons had on Tuesday mm -hmm. to prepare DBEs, because the, the real problem is not just um, minority participation, is it's about having enough minorities with the capacity to participate. The capacity to participate. And so from what the efforts that he's doing in his office to build capacity for people, they'll put more businesses in position to compete and win. Brother, listen, I'm not being condescending in any way, but the presentation from NDA said that we got plenty of hairdressers. Mm -hmm. We got plenty of barbers, okay, but on. we lack architects, engineers, engineers, those who can actually resurface roads, those that actually have trucking business, those who have dirt companies who can participate. So this is the opportunity to not only just the first diversify your business opportunities, but a chance to actually make it grow in a way. So in, the, in that, um, if I'm not mistaken, mm -hmm. in that conference you just mentioned, there were only three African-Americans that were highlighted. Mm -hmm. Three African-American businesses. Some of them boasted about having a half a billion dollars in contracts, some $300 million in contracts. So basically they have found a way to work with the government okay, there. and they have benefited greatly. Okay. And listen, kudos, but we need more. Mm -hmm. And the only way we get more is prepare our people now. So the challenge that I, that I, that, that me and my colleagues, uh, you included, issue to MDA is mentorship shadowing programs to grow these portfolios so that we have a real chance at the table. Mm -hmm. So for those out there, the those in the listening audience, uh, yes, you do need to go into trucking. You do need to go into transportation. You do need to go into excavation. You do need to go into resurfacing roads. We need to look at industries that change our communities and our state. So for those out there with hairdressers and, and barbers, hey, listen, keep doing your thing. But you probably won't get in the table in this development unless you change uh, your business structure and your business services to the state. So um, what are some things beyond this project and that ripple effect that happens mm. that you would like to inform people that there are other opportunities beyond what's in the contract? Listen, with a project this big, Imagine this. If any equipment breaks down that needs tires, you might need to have a tire industry, a mm -hmm. tire business. Um, those who are bringing in, uh, who have dirt companies, you got to bring in the dirt. There are so many spinoffs, and you can imagine anything from also child care centers that may be uh, needed for a plant this size. Mm -hmm. There are a plethora of ways, and we're going to press uh, MBA and this corporation to unveil those things so the minorities can be at the table for information on the front end and not on the back end. Well, I appreciate you. Um, next, I want to bring up my good friend and what I call the coolest brother in the capital. <laughs> no doubt about it. No doubt about it. And when I say 
<laughs> he, he knew exactly what, he what, know, he what he is. Is. <laughs> a good mentor, especially to folks like myself who are a little rambunctious. Y'all know I, I came from I came from Jackson City Hall, so I was a little rough around the edge, you know. So when you throw me into the Capitol, uh, I have to change my tone a little bit because the goal is to not just be rah rah. The goal is to be effective. This should not. That's right. Right. And you taught me, and I won't say this publicly, you taught me a legislator's job is to pass laws. I tried. I did a good job. You, 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 that's the job. <laughs> you said the job is to pass a law. That's true. You did listen. That's the goal. The goal is not to stand on your head or turn over a table. Right. The goal is to pass a law Maybe that in turn right. benefits community, which in turn changes Mississippi and moves it forward. And so I bumped my head a few times, ladies and gentlemen, but Representative Carl Mickens, he represents uh, part of uh, Lowndes County, uh, Knoxville, and uh, Tipper Hall. And Winston. And Winston County. All right, now. Um, his, his, he, has, he has a family that is um, has a whole structure out there. Your brother is on the Board of Supervisors? That's correct. And, and your family's been at Staples in the community for a long time. Pretty much a half a lifetime. That's right. Uh, so from your perspective, um, talk about the ripple of the area, because the Golden Triangle is three counties, not one. And that's what creates that triangle. Talk a little bit about how this is going to reverberate around Mississippi. Well, first off, tell us a little bit about yourself. And then we'll get into it. We've got 30 more minutes. Hello out there, uh, Radio World. We, we, I just want to thank um, Representative Stamps for having us on, my colleagues and I. And we appreciate him and the legislature for what he did. But also, uh, as he said, I'm, I'm Representative Carl Mickens. I represent District 42, which encompasses Lowndes County, Knoxville, and Western County. And I have been what we would call a lifetime politician, career politician. Mm -hmm. I've served in uh, county government as circuit court clerk uh, for years. And then somebody decided that I need to come to Jackson and serve as a state legislator that I would be good for the people of that district. So here we are. But the ripple effect, I feel like uh, a $2.5 billion a uh, project such as this, it would go far beyond Noshby County and it would change lives in Noshby County for, for us, the wages that our people will be able to get, that we can, might probably get a job there at this, at this industry. And also it would go down into Winston County, uh, Kemper County, just all of the surrounding areas and we will grow because of this. And businesses in our in our county, in Knoxville, will also possibly be, be able to jumpstart due to the fact that we got a lot of dirt in Knoxville County. We we have railway in Knoxville County, and so all of this will will be a benefit for our school district and 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 all our families that that would be impacted. You know, um, another thing you taught me, well, first off, back to the main point, the point is to pass laws that benefit mm -hmm. our community. It's very rare that you see the majority of the authors of the legislation are, 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 are men of color. That's, that's correct. That's true. That's correct. Yeah. Talk about that and that, well, navigate that. I look at this like us, my, my brothers and I, my, my legislative brothers and colleagues, we are not at odds with each other. Mm -hmm. We 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 together on this project, you know, any project that gonna benefit Mississippians. Mm -hmm. And and so it, we 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 don't worry about who's taking the lead, mm -hmm. who who getting most attention. We we just want to support and fill in for that we're needed because I can't be representing Kareem. I can't be representing Taylor. Mm -hmm. I got to be 
what God made me to be and give to what I got in me to the people that I come in contact with. Mm -hmm. Just like you stated about our conversations. Mm -hmm. I tried to pour into you what I thought you was might be lacking and misunderstanding. Mm -hmm. And it worked. Not being bashful and, and, and afraid to come to you because mm -hmm. we're here to help each other. Mm -hmm. You know, God would have it that way. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so that's how I pour into people. I, you know, I try to make them better and mm -hmm. try to make me better by doing what I was assigned to do. I feel like, you know, from God. Well, you know, um, there's people who move in front of the scenes all the time. But you move kind of behind the scenes a lot. Yes. Because that's where the work gets done. Right. Even in this moment right now, you want to go back and let somebody else talk. <laughs> I do. <laughs> I know you do. But that's why I wanted to have you this moment because it takes people who want to bring people together mm -hmm. to get people together to actually do stuff. To do stuff. And you, you and let you, you know, see, you got to let your go getters go get it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it, it, it takes people from all, all with all type of characters. And I have no problem with laying back and, hey, y'all boys go get all this team. Y'all young boys, y'all go get it. And, hey, I'm going to do, do my part mm -hmm. without you seeing what I did. But because it's not that happen. often that, that, that you had, that, that we write laws that are embraced across party lines, right. across race lines. And for this is monumental on several regards. Mm -hmm. So much so that they had it was so monumental to call a special session to do it. Mm -hmm. right. Two months before the session. Because <laughs> when, these, when it comes to economic development, you know, a lot of things have to happen behind the scenes before you can pull the trigger. Mm -hmm. So to the public, it seems rushed. But to the people who've been involved in the process, like Representative Kareem said, 15 years, 20 years. Right. It seemed like oh, it's about time. <laughs> it's about time. Yes, and, and Representative, Representative Karini, he, he's been totally instrumental in this. And you know, mm -hmm. you would know our, our colleague. Mm -hmm. He's very vocal and very thorough on what he put his hands on. Mm -hmm. And so we, and so why wouldn't I want to support him and and see what to see this go through? Uh, we we're about helping everybody, not just black, mm -hmm. white, and whoever. In the state of Mississippi, mm -hmm. we want to, we want everybody to be blessed, and we want everybody to to be able to support their families. We want to have good schools, we want to have good roads, good high-paying jobs, and this this manufacturing going to impact the entire state of Mississippi. That's right. If not just the Golden Triangle, not just down 20, 30 miles, but it's going to reach from. Tennessee line to the Miss to, to the Louisiana line. Mm -hmm. This 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 impact from this industry right here. And I'm just glad to be part of it. And I'm glad that that you saw fit to have us to come here and voice our opinions and, and let the people know in your listening range area that hey, this is a good day for Mississippi, and it's a great day for the, all the people in Mississippi, not just some. A lot of times the face of economic development isn't always everybody who's involved to do it. Right. And I didn't want for this moment to go by. And I'm going to keep pushing y'all, drag y'all in front of some more, because <laughs> the face of economic development for our future has to be more than one color, one race, one party. Right. It has to be all of us working together, showing that Mississippi is not our past. Mississippi is prepared for the future. And you got people who aren't polarizing people. Mm -hmm. You got people who are right, 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 right. coming together mm -hmm. to push this forward. Right, and we did all work together, like white colleagues, black colleagues, you know, biracial, mm -hmm. everything. We we just worked together and, and bipartisan, and even in our, even our, our local meetings, mm -hmm. we worked together and we got it done. That's right. And so, and hey, we're here today, and you let and I'm gonna let the. Uh, your, your viewers know, your viewers and listeners know that hey, 
We some pretty good looking guys. <laughs> 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 you question. I, I, I didn't have a question, more of a statement though. Like I really, like you guys saying today, this evening. You know, prosperity is is is, is something real. You know, mm-hmm. uh, generational change and changing down. I'm looking at it from this side. Being, being I'm big in health, mm-hmm. love education. Mm-hmm. You know, people talking about how you fight crime. Well, this is a, a solution, right? It's not a result. This is a solution. solution. And my thing is, you, know, you, you can't, you know, we, we hot water all the time. Health, education, economic, we push this all the time. I didn't know it 15 years. I'm going to be honest with you. I didn't know it take 15 years to make. I'm still learning. But I'm looking at how many people won't lose, okay, mm-hmm. to some health disparity because now they got access and got some money to pay for it to go to the doctor. I'm, I'm being honest with you guys. Mm-hmm. I'm looking at people who will say, you know what, uh, I got two parents in the house, so I'm just I'm, I'm talking about a whole list of wraparound approach where I'm seeing right now that's coming out. And so it's a lot more than just the two point five billion dollars right now we're talking about. If you're on a community perspective, you're talking about what actually meets you, you know, touches them, what not though. You know, so so we're talking about generational wealth. It's a lot going on, and we're talking about all the negativity. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna finish in a minute, but all the next thing going on in Mississippi, but here's something constructive and logical that's going on in the city right now. We need we need this. We we should tell it because you know the tongue gets life. So keep on talking about it. Keep on pushing it and whatnot though. Because this is gonna be here in twenty. I say twenty twenty nine gonna be here in, in effect moving. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of people gonna be able to eat. A lot of residential right. real estate is going. To be, I'm just saying it's a whole. Other, it's another whole big piece to this. Let's right, get call. We got call. Hello, call the weapon to show. What's your question to comment? I just want to commend you. Uh, Representative uh, Stamps, this is uh, your colleague, Bo Brown. Hey, Bo Brown. Representative Brown. Man, you got my boys up in there with you, man. <laughs> 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 they, they, they sound mighty good. Oh, oh cool, cool hair looking, meek and the exactly right, uh, the Stamps. He, he's the coolest dude around. <laughs> Listen, I just want to commend you all for that. Uh, Tenacity to, to continue with pursuing that project, mm-hmm. and I want the public to know. I don't think nobody said that, but I don't believe we had not one single uh, Democrat caucus or Black caucus member to vote against the project, uh, and and that I thought shows a lot of unity. And it's uh, I'm just so uh, appreciative of the of the fight that you have put up. Uh, Brother Mickens and uh, Kareem and, and for Taylor for getting that project uh, for uh, Northeast Mississippi. And it's said it's going to be a, uh, you, you might say, something that we can duplicate throughout the state. And I'm just very proud of you fellows, man. Y'all sounding good. And I just want the Jackson audience to know that these dudes are from up there in Northeast Mississippi, and we all in this thing together. Appreciate it. Appreciate it, Mr. Brown. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, important words, uh, Representative Mickey. Well, I'm just glad to be part of, part of this great day in Mississippi, and we're, we're going to do greater and bigger things to come. And this year is something that everybody could, should be proud of. And there shouldn't be no sad face in Mississippi today because we're headed forward. We know we have other issues, and we're going to fight those fights too. But today is the fight that we have economic development that going to be a great impact for years to come in the state of Mississippi. Thank y'all and have a great night. All right, then. Now. So I want to yield back to my two other colleagues. Any, any important words you want to say? Representative Sheck Taylor? Yes. Uh, you know, we did have a press conference on the, uh, on the Capitol, mm-hmm. uh, on the steps of the Capitol to highlight uh, of the failing infrastructure in the city of Jackson and also Medicaid expansion, which is needed. Uh, desperately needed. In fact, it might be the saving grace for the state of Mississippi, especially since we passed that, that, uh, that tax fee. Mm-hmm. Um, and I wanted to make sure that that was highlighted because um, we did take an opportunity today uh, and it was not juxtaposed or in any type of, of way uh, to diminish uh, the work that we're doing in Northeast Mississippi. Uh, to the city of Jackson, to our Hines County delegation, we stand with you in efforts to, to heal this water situation and expand um, uh, uh, health care. Uh, 
So we do Turn have your radio to, down, Carla. We're just a second. We'll get to you. So we do have to, you know, it, it's important to mention it because uh, while we are celebrating a win, mm -hmm. we also we also have to say that we are still here fighting for those same issues that that all of our constituents and all of our colleagues are, 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 are still fighting uh, in the city of Jackson. Jackson being the seat of the state of Mississippi has to be set right. Things have to be done appropriately. And we have to get every dollar possible from the state of Mississippi and from the federal level to make sure that we are not the next flame. And as far as health care, that we are not, uh, you know, continue to be the butt of every joke that comes down the line. Mm -hmm. So I, 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 I want to be clear in the messaging. While we are celebrating a win, until we all win, we have not progressed enough. Thank you. All right, Paul, welcome to the show. What's your question or comment? And again, my, my question is about that. You know, kind of a great win. Now, what level of uh, employment is people of color going to share in this plan? You know, Northeast Mississippi doesn't have a, I guess, an old women trained workforce. So, where are these people going to come from? And now we're going to have training on the job or job training to get the, the job with the person or the people that apply. And and, and another thing that, uh, well, answer that first and then I'll give my second part of the question. Uh, well, well, brother, that is a, a wonderful question. Mm -hmm. And in fact, that is what that is one of the uh, most beautiful parts of this project is that um, those who have a high school diploma, and those who have a basic college uh, degree uh, can apply for any of these jobs or for the majority of these jobs and expect to demand an income of somewhere upwards of $60,000 to $93,000. Uh, there will be on the job training. Uh, there will be uh, some of our community colleges uh, and workforce development assisting in this in this project. So uh, not only now, now listen, this is tough work now. You know, this is factory work. This is hot. This is intensive. And I guarantee you, anybody who works on that plant is going to deserve every dime they get. Mm -hmm. um, but it is, um, you don't have to have a PhD. You don't have to have a master's degree. So for the average working person here in the state of Mississippi, you can apply for that job. Uh, now, now the downside is that it's a thousand jobs and they're probably looking at over 20,000 applications. So let's be, let's not be slowful to the table. Let's mm -hmm. apply early and let's apply often. And let's make sure that uh, you're talking to your state <coughs> representatives in the area to make sure that you're represented uh, in, in that matter. What's your second question, Cadman? So, uh, along with, uh, along with Representative Stan, and who are the other people that is, uh, should be given credit for getting this plan to Mississippi? Well, I mean, to be honest, everyone who voted for the uh, for this uh, plan in the state of Mississippi, all of your legislators, I think there was only about five detractors in the House of Representatives, and there were zero uh, in the in the Senate. Mm -hmm. So this is uh, by far one of the greatest windfalls as far as support, bipartisan support. You had just about 100 percent of Democratic representation, Black Caucus representation, making sure this project happened. So, uh, you know, we, we don't do uh, the eyes. We do the weeds uh, on the Democratic side of the table. So, so, now, I have one other point, and I'm going to let you guys go. All right, how, how long did this process take in the location that's been chosen for this, this plan? So, uh, so, 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 Kevin, the um, as uh, Representative Kareem said earlier, they've been working on this mega site for over 15 years, and this the this this work that took to get here wasn't a today thing or this year. Mm -hmm. They've been working on preparing this mega site. Um, since before he was even on the city council. Um, so this work to get these kinds of economic development projects done takes a long time at multiple levels of government. And even in some cases you have uh, cities close to it that don't even participate as much as they should in order to get the support necessary. So it, it does take a long time to do these things. It takes small steps. There were several 
businesses that came to this area prior to this large, this, actually this is existing business is already there. That's being expanded. This is not us recruiting a business. This is us investing in a already successful business in Mississippi to grow this business, to now be a global player in the aluminum industry. So this is really a, 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 a textbook invest in ourselves, invest in our businesses that already have a proven track record. Right now, 30% of the people who work in this industry are, are, are black and half of that 30% are single mothers. So just if you want some demographic information about, you know, so if those same numbers portray here, you'll have uh, out of a thousand, you have 300 black folks making over $90,000 a year. If those same numbers grow the yeah. same way they've grown and, and, that, and that's game changer. Yeah. I think that's a fair statement. Right. Well, I'd just like to say this to you guys. I appreciate, you know, I'm sticking with this over this period of time, and it took a lot of effort, and I'm sure the people of Mississippi is proud of you guys for what you've done and what you brought to the state. And I thank personally for myself and just keep the good work up. Y'all have a good evening. Appreciate you guys. Representative Cream, any parting words you want to say before we get out there? Again, I just want to thank you all for giving us the opportunity to come by and, 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 uh, and share our views on this particular project. Um, it's always good to come here. I thank you for what you do for your constituents, uh, Representative Stamp. Um, you know, it's just a good, it's a good day, and uh, and I just did all everything that my other colleagues have said. You know, we're in full support of Jackson and its needs, and uh, also uh, we're in full support of expanded Medicaid. And uh, and closing hospitals. Like I got to tell you a little story on that. And mm -hmm. you know, we had a situation in North Mississippi where a young lady had an asthma attack, and she. I mean, let me respond to a comment here. Just to be clear, um, comment on Facebook talking about we need to have a special session to address the needs of Jackson. I agree with you. There was an attempt made to have a special session. Mm -hmm to address our issues. Five of our senators signed a letter to the Lieutenant Governor and Governor to do that. And the city of Jackson pushed against those efforts to have a special session. So um, we need to, just like the city of Columbus didn't make some decisions that could have aided them to participate better in the history of this, we need Jackson to support a special session. The legislature can only allocate funds in session. So at this point, I'm all for a special session for the city of Jackson. But at this point, Jackson City Hall needs to be for a special session. And if then if we don't get that, then we'll have to wait to the regular session. And which what's what I see happening, which it'll be a situation where Jackson's issues are meshed in with all the other issues. Yeah. So no, if we can get the city of Jackson to agree to support a special session, then we can have the inertia necessary to do that. Because we can have a special session by the issue and then be in opposite ends. It takes everybody working together. And, uh, and that's why that did not happen. Uh, or the energy didn't rise enough to make that happen in our crisis moment is because we had some destabilization at the local level that took away from that energy to even have a special session. So, um, three important words. No, everybody has a role to play. That's right. Uh, we had two uh, giants on our Lyons County Board of Supervisors that argued and fussed and fought all the time. One of them is a dear friend and a mentor of mine, Mr. Leroy Brooks, mm -hmm. and one is uh, named Harry Sanders. Long story short, our economic developer came in and said, hey, if we're going to have economic development in Lyons County, one thing that you all cannot do is use economic development as a political football. Everybody mm -hmm. agreed. Everybody has a lane to play. Everybody has a role to play. Everybody has something to do. That goes along with your point with the special session. Everybody has to sing out the same hymn book for us to be progressive and move our, our constituents and our respective villages and hamlets together. We have to be respectful of one another. We have to uh, check the weapons in at the door and go in and have a heart to heart about what we need to do to move our municipalities and hamlets forward. 
Again, thank you all. I love y'all. <laughs> it's on the John T. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I want to highlight that we got Miss Bethany Hill here as well. She's been Bethany. living observe. We're gonna have a whole show with her in about two weeks if we can get her back over here. I'll be back. <laughs> and uh part of words, Jason, we got one minute left to go. Uh, uh you know, I don't say too much at the end, but I'm saying uh, stay safe. Uh please remember next Tuesday, November the eighth. Let's get out there and vote. Uh Mississippi move. You need a ride. Uh, look up Mississippi Moo. I don't have his number right now yeah, in front yeah, of me. Yeah, I'll, I'll but, but hey, he will come down there and pick you up, senior citizens. Right. Make sure we get there and, and be safe too. And, uh, go ahead, Mr. And as we always say, go check out our underwriters, Mr. Michael Jordan, the Michael Jordan Transportation Service. You can go to www.mjstransportation1.com for your transportation needs. Also, if you're hungry, you ain't got to go to that other place. You can go right over to uh, over Stamp Soup Burgers and get you a Stamp Soup Burger. There's uh, a whole cow between two pieces of bread. It tastes to the last drop. And as we always say, we end every show. Never let anybody put you in a position where you don't love your own people. Because when you hate your own folks, you're part of the very oppression that we're trying to lift ourselves out of. I love you, Jackson. I love you, Mississippi. Hey. <laughs>